you also take classics, Brian Adams. I remember watching him in Maine of all places and the stage had all of his guitars and all the essence of the music. You choose to be daring. How do you pull that off? Wow, Brian Adams. Wow, you, yeah, you have done some homework there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow, indeed. I have to, indeed, absolutely A plus. Um, <laughs> And now the host of Entertainment Now, Gail Scott Key. Back to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. That was fun. You got to see and meet my co-host and have a little meet and greet. And so I hope that you are going to tune in, join us on YouTube. And of course, now we are into the next half hour of our show. And we are super excited about our guest who is here joining us right now. Africa Rising is a fifth release from the noted smooth jazz sax leader Andre Ward on the Gallery Entertainment Orpheus Entertainment label. The Chicago native brings together remakes and originals with a new single release and remake. Woo! Shade's Kiss of Life. Mm, this is amazing. He's appearing courtesy of our dear friends over at Double Exposure PR Media. And we welcome Andre Ward. Andre, thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you? I'm well. Thank you very much for having me and allowing me to be on this platform. I really appreciate it. It is our pleasure. It is our pleasure. And I also understand you hail from Chicago, but those winds blew you right on over to Berkeley <laughs> in Boston. And you know why I say that? Because a good friend of ours who is an artist with the New Power Generation uh, Prince's former band, uh, Les Cleveland, who's a good friend of ours, is also from that alum. So, hmm, what a big switch, huh? Uh, yes, uh, Chicago is uh, definitely home and a foundation. Yes, the Windy City will uh, <laughs> let you know that it's there. Uh, but I'm very, very fortunate to uh, have the opportunity to uh, receive a scholarship to Berklee College of Music, brought me to Boston. And uh, yes, you know, Wes and I are great friends. We play together. Um, fabulous uh, musician as well. Wonderful. See, didn't even know that little tidbit right there. So is it like a small, like tight knit group where all of these expert musicians kind of know each other because you're all so accomplished at your craft? Um, you know, I, I think it's, um, it's a, it's a fairly small group, but I think the one thing that we try to do is really lean on each other's talents. Uh, everyone has something to bring to the, the ingredients that I always say when you're creating music. And so it's really trying to find, uh, that right ingredient, you know, that right sound, uh, for a particular track or song. And so, you know, although a small group, we do reach out to each other to try to make sure that we can bring the right elements. Wow. Tell us a little bit about the background of where you started to get into the music. You were a drummer first, right? Yes. Yeah, so Chicago, again, um, is my home. And I was very fortunate uh, during that time, there was a thriving arts program, uh, which is so important in our school systems. And I had the opportunity to uh, partake in the uh, after school arts program where we got a chance to try different instruments. And I started with the uh, snare drums, which was very good. You can play a note and make a sound immediately, uh, although most parents may not enjoy that. Um, I had the opportunity to then switch to the trumpet, uh, but then it was when I picked up the uh, alto sax. You know, I just kind of felt that connection, and uh, from there, you know, the um, uh, I guess it just kind of uh, blew to me, and I guess really got uh, engaged and excited to uh, kind of learn more about the instrument which I'm still learning today. Learning never stops. That's, wow, that's incredibly humble uh, to say that, uh, Andre, especially with your accomplishments. And, uh, you know, I it, it's, and it, just, it hits home for me because I've got three sons and one of them has chosen to play the saxophone. All right. You know, my, my <laughs> oldest. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I, so he's going to get to see this and get super excited. You know, so I, I really love it. 
And I, and I wonder sometimes when somebody is so accomplished, you know, do you have a favorite saxophonist that maybe inspired you? Uh, and, 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 and the other part of the question I was going to ask is, I saw contemporary, but then I also saw jazz. What genre would you most describe yourself under? Well, uh, first, you know, I, um, again, you know, very blessed and humble to even be in the position I'm in. I, I really try to categorize, categorize my music as feel-good music. And the reason is, is that the music is a universal language. Music should have an emotional connection. Uh, and, you know, to the listeners and audience, you should be able to feel the music. And so, you know, yes, jazz musician or R&B, I really just try to make good music that people can feel and it can touch them uh, emotionally. Um, as far as, you know, favorite sax players, you know, I think uh, we all learn from each other. I think what makes us different is um, your sound and your approach. But I have to say that, you know, the greats as far as Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, Sonny Stitz, uh, Cannonball Adderley, you know, these were the favorites that I continue to listen to and learn from. Um, because again, you know, uh, we're standing on the shoulders that they've already provided for us. Um, there's a lot of contemporary guys that I love to listen to because of their very unique sound. I think Gerald Arbright is great. And I think uh, Kirk Whalum played very soulfully and I can go on and on. But uh, for, for me, I'm continuing to learn. Um, we all are individuals. So I think there's something to learn from everyone. And your I favorite that. artist, great Irvine, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just love that's a great answer, Gary, because I was thinking to myself, sometimes people ask me, what's your favorite genre? But my background is Cuban, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. I like all kinds of music. And mm -hmm. I always say it's it's about the song, not the genre for me. If the song yeah. feels great, you know, so I love when you said that, that you make feel good music. Because yeah. it, it does, it, you know, uh, hit our, heart, our hearts. And, that, and it should. I mean, music, you know, needs to make that connection. But, you know, I'm also one that I can get up, have a cup of coffee, listen to Beethoven's Fifth and listen to some Bach. I mean, I, I, I just love music, you know, uh, and I think that gives me the opportunity for my musical vocabulary uh, to kind of stretch, a, you know, um, a little longer. But your favorite is Earth, Wind and Fire, which Without I can hear. Without a doubt. I concur. Without a doubt. Yes, <laughs> I have had them on the show. And oh, I, wow. I have to tell you, I, I was very blown away to just to have legendary performers in the presence. And I'm interested in what is it, I know it, what, what the magic was for me, but what was it for you when you listened to Earth, Wind & Fire that inspired you? So first of all, they're originally from Chicago. <laughs> but, wow, okay. uh, I was trying to see a I, um, yep. when I, I listened to Earth, Wind and Fire, I mean, and it's just the, um, you know, when you want to paint the picture about a group and the elements, but what really kind of, you know, made me so excited and just kind of gravitated toward Earth, Wind and Fire, the arrangements, uh, the compositions, mm. the songwriting, the emotional and spiritual connection that the music had. I mean, if it was yeah. uh, can't hide love to that's the way of the world, there was always <laughs> this message in their music yeah. that really hit home. Yes. And then the, the musicianship was always at a high level. And um, and so, you know, it, it um, when I first heard them, I was just kind of blown away. And I just kind of started studying them and listening to them. And they uh, continue to be my all time favorite favorite group of all time, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Well, they, speaking of all of this um, inspiration, I mean, two of the people that I was reading about that you have worked with, I mean, please tell us about working with Miss Hathaway and Mr. Freddie Jackson. What was that like? Um, a learning experience for me that I kind of take all of these experiences in and um, try to make sure that I can have my music and my feeling come out of those experiences. Uh, Layla and I was at Berkeley at the same time. Uh, and so, you know, it was that learning aspect together, uh, being uh, uh, on the College of, of Berkeley and learning together and uh, then going out and uh, on her first project, 
have any opportunity to go out. For, for a lot of us coming out of Berkeley was one of those somewhat first professional experiences. And so that was a learning curve right there. Um, and then having the opportunity to go out with some other artists like Will Downing and Freddie Jackson um, was really a game changer for me. I spent a number of years with Freddie Jackson when he was really at the top as the number one uh, R&B artist. So we traveled a lot, but what was really instrumental was uh, four of those years I was his musical director. And uh, it was really um, a learning curve, uh, leadership, but the responsibility. And um, so some of those lessons I still take with me today. Freddie Jackson was also on the show. Yeah. And he yeah, knows everyone. I'm telling you. Well, as I interviewed him, he blew my mind because he wanted me to introduce him when he came out to Boston on the stage. And I was like, what? So through double double media exposure, through double exposure, I was just like uh, talking to Angelo. And I was like, Angelo, I, I just want to talk to you about something, just a little something, because <laughs> Freddie Jackson just like laid that on me. And I was like, I mean, what an honor, because he has gone through that voice, that voice, and he can bring out any song. You also take classics, Brian Adams. I remember watching him in Maine, of all places, and the stage had all of his guitars and all the essence of the music. You choose to be daring. How do you pull that off? Wow, Brian Adams. Wow, you yeah, you have done some homework there. Huh? <laughs> wow, I have to indeed absolutely A plus. Um, the first time I've been asked about that particular track, which was very, very early in my career. Um, it was an honor to do that particular track. Um, it was a little bit more on the pop um edge, uh, but we stood up for the challenge and just wanted to put an instrumental spin on it. You know, one of the challenges that I've always felt with remakes was one, you know, be very, very careful with picking them because, you know, mm -hmm. there's some that you want to truly stay away from. But then there there are ones that, you know, as a musician and you, you want to have your voice because again, everyone's voice is different. And uh, with the Kiss of Life in Sade, that was, a, a, everyone knows that particular song. It's very popular, very yeah. familiar. And, you know, you can't outdo it and and my my job is that I just wanted to put my emotions and my mm -hmm. voice on on a track that was already uh, a great composition and so those are the challenges when doing remakes and <laughs> the Stevie Wonder you know those the emotions um it's, it's a challenge but you know it's also not trying to redo to outdo the track but just to kind of bring it home to to uh, a different voice have they ever heard it, the artists that you- That's what I was just find? thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And said, hey, um, I've so heard my song. <laughs> th that's a great question. As far as the, the particular tracks that we've redone on this particular project, um, we have not gotten any indication that the artists have, have heard it. Um, some of the songwriters may have, because you know you have to get permission to <laughs> redo. Some mm -hmm. of them, but um, but no, uh, that's a great question. I, I would like to know that as well. <laughs> well, there's still time. It's brand new. Falling. That's right. And I, I was watching it. I saw one of them was fallen by Alicia Keys. I'm like, I'm dying to hear that rendition. Yes. See what yes. that sounds like. And it's funny because Gail was talking about connections and stuff like that. It's funny how these things work because Gail, you had a guest, uh, Michael Kurt Jackson, who works with the Jacksons. Um, and, I, and I had met him separately apart from you one time, and he was telling me that his inspiration began also with Earth, Wind, and Fire. And he became, his mentor was a, is it Philip Bailey? I could, oh my goodness, my, mm -hmm. my mind, mm -hmm. you know? But I was like, I, man, they are iconic. I used to love uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Did you say oh, used to? Did you say used to? I know. I still don't lock your ears. Because he didn't mean to say used to. He do. said but he you know does. What happens is, You're not <laughs> dating yourself either, Richie. Come on. Yeah, I, you know what? Put I, your hand I, there. I, I'm so young. I'm so young. <laughs> That's all you guys need to know. You know, but the funny thing is sometimes you, you forget, oh, you know, I have not listened to a song from these guys in a long time, you know? And, uh, and there's this one song, oh my goodness, that, that they used to play. I used to play it over and over again to the point where it annoyed people. You know, I forget the name of the song right now, but I, I love to have these inspirations. 
Now you you've actually met them as well. I'm, I'm guessing. I, I, I have not had the opportunity to meet them uh, personally, but let me tell you, their music is embedded in me so deeply rooted because I have listened to them constantly, constantly, constantly. Uh, continue to, to learn from it. Um, you know, I, I think as a musician, um, I don't know too many musicians, I don't know of any musicians that do not like Earth, Wind & Fire. Um, but, you know, it, it, they're just one of those groups that if you really want to have a history and an educational um, kind of class on, you know, arranging, composing, uh, emotional spirit connection, Earth, Wind & Fire would be the group to listen to. Okay, Absolutely. so I'm going to put this prediction out there for you. And this is what I see for you because I've heard. I did listen to your music. Thank you. Dion Warwick. Mm -hmm. Dion Warwick. And I can see because her voice really brings in the essence of that music. And where you love to have the remakes, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, Andre, you could put a hurting on everybody's <laughs> soul is, with is, her. Is, is there one in particular that you're thinking about? Oh my goodness. Oh, and he might, I sense he might have a surprise up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, because uh, that's, uh, I, I have not thought about uh, Miss Warwick. I mean, she uh, has a great catalog. But um, what the world needs now is yeah, love. And that, and that is so true. That would be the one. That so. is so true. Yeah. That is absolutely so true. Yeah, which, which makes me think of now this benevolent side of you. Because mm -hmm. uh, we were chatting a little bit about it. I wanted to know about the, um, the Africa you know, rising and, and, and what that's all about. And so, you know, with creating Africa Rising, you know, I really wanted, you know, from a musical concept of, um, you know, having some music that really can connect as, as we as black and brown people really rising up and working together to empower and support uh, success. And, and, and what's that, what does that look like? And what's that vision? Mm -hmm. And when I connect that musically, you know, we, strategically looked at sequencing uh, the tracks on Africa Rising because we wanted the listeners to go on that musical journey, to have that connection, and um, wanted the listeners to really feel the music and, and, and have that. And so, yes, it, it is really about rising and working together to empower and support uh, Black and Brown excellence. And of I course, it. it is it. Black History Month, so it's fitting. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because we, we've got several people, Gail, that you keep uh, connecting with that have a connection to Africa. There's something I just hear the word and it inspires me, you know, just to hear it. It's just an amazing continent, you know. But uh, but I believe with Christian Ray, when you interviewed him, he had a, a nonprofit in Mozambique and they go back and forth a lot and stuff like that. And then you haven't gotten Mark Ottenwaller yet, but I'm sure he's coming soon. Mm -hmm. They gave the Nelson Mandela the Hope Prize, you know, the Hope mm -hmm. Award, and everything else. I just love it. I, I love that, you know, I love when people do something and it's not just, you know, the entertainment, you know, only, but that there is something that they care about that's tied to it, whether it's the music or that or that project, or it's people, or they're helping, or they're doing mm -hmm. something. There's something about that that makes me kind of like, become more of a fan of, of, of that person or that that uh, brand I, I think it's important um i think it's really important but i also think you know music has a way of being that universal language where we can connect through music you know at one time you know the communication was done through drums and uh this is the way that communication uh had to be during certain times and so to really continue to use music as that vehicle uh, as that platform uh, mm -hmm. to move people, to communicate, to connect, um, I think it's important. And for me, I truly, I'm thankful and humble because I feel I'm sitting here having this conversation with this wonderful group of people because I had mentors and, and, and opportunities that was given to me. And I just feel that I have to give back. And this is, it's a cycle 
of love. What the world needs now is love. Yes, it does. Amen. We just want to know where are we invited to the next, you know, the next live event. That's what we, we want yes. to go. Yes, where, where, how are you promoting this new album? Like, where will you be playing all of your new songs sometime so, soon? So, yes, some, uh, soon. Uh, right now, we are, you know, as you are familiar with, we're doing uh, what we're calling an awareness campaign. So we're going out, we're doing the interviews, um, you know, reintroducing Andre Ward. I mean, ap, you know, since COVID, everything was kind of at a standstill. So just kind of getting back into the game that way. We are putting together a promotional tour that will be later this year. And so look forward to coming to a city near you, to everyone. Boston. Uh, and, and oh, really oh, looking really? Forward Atlanta. <laughs> The wish list so, is coming. You, you all are where now? You're located in. So I'm on the outskirts of Boston. Okay. I'm in Atlanta. Okay. I'm Boston. actually in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I go back and forth with Fort Lauderdale, South Florida. Okay. All right. And where I'm the host, you should come where the host is first. So, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I was just at Scholars New Year's Eve. Oh, uh, really? I was just at Scholars Jazz Club New Year's Eve, and I'm sure that I'll be back sometime during the year. But uh, yes, I was just there. What in the lovely venue? Uh, always, yes, seems like home to me. And um, uh huh. Yes, yes. So oh. I will make sure that you're aware of that next time I'm. Thank coming. you, Mr. Andre, because I will be right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be just moving everybody. Excuse me. Excuse Make me. sure you pass on the information, Gil, because, you know, we'd like to go too. Oh, yes, I yeah. will. Yeah. I, yes, I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Won't let me keep them to myself, will you? Yeah, yeah, share that. No, we have to share all this yeah. goodness. All right. Sharing is caring. <laughs> yep, and I'm, I'm hoping to get uh, to Atlanta and, you know, the Carolinas as well. Very nice. That'd be awesome. Yeah, nice. I know I know. you probably won't get to the Carolinas first, but Atlanta, everybody goes to Atlanta. No? Yeah. More direct flights than any other airport in the, <laughs> in the world, as far as I know. So, so Christina's going to get lucky with that, you know? Well, Atlanta's a hot ticket. It, it is. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I'm, I'm curious what new things you might be up to that maybe you can, you know, uh, tell us about and, and the, the listeners and the viewers get a chance to sort of support you in that. Well, first, um, I just want to thank all the listeners um, for the love and support. We, you know, it's been really humbling and over, um, I mean, just the response has been really great and positive um, for the music. And, you know, again, it's really uplifting for me because it's exactly what we want to do as far as connecting, um, but not just listen to the music, but feel the music. Uh, so I really want to kind of stay in contact with everyone. The Instagram is um, at Andre Ward Music. Uh, the Facebook is at Andre Ward Music. Tried to make it real simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, the website, which is being reconstructed, just uh, remodeled, we like to say, is uh, at AndreWardMusic.com. And your YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. uh, well, personally, I don't have that, but Andre Ward. And it will, you, there's about six or seven. Of That's how we were hearing. You have some, you, your music has some really good um, numbers. The so people are listening and your YouTube page has some really good followers. So it's busy over there. And, and this is why I, you know, said just thank you to everyone because it's been, it, the support and the love has been really great. And yes, those numbers um, has been really good when you look at them. And, and definitely with the new streaming platform, uh, it's a learning curve for a lot of us that was strictly just be on my ass cap. Um, now there's kind of a, a a different tool that you have to use. So a little learning curve, but uh, it's been good. Well, I think you need to clear your mantelpiece, Andre, and make room for some awards because you've got some great music out there that touches a soul and it mm -hmm. is soothing and it is timely. And especially with COVID coming in and out, you know, some people are just like, okay, I'm done with this COVID, but you know, something will never be done with music. And we are so grateful for you having the heart and keeping all of the different renditions and original pieces coming out. And we are going to keep following you. And for those of you at home, again, Andre Ward, it is going to be amazing. African Africa rising. And you have to make sure that you join Andre on Facebook, on YouTube and on Instagram. We're going to be posting him. And am I forgetting anything? 
Mm -hmm. We'll share those links for sure. When, when this is produced and it goes out there, we'll make sure that we have and Andrew uh, and Andre Ward music. That's the ones you mentioned for Instagram and Facebook and any other links that uh, but, uh, people want to hear this. They need inspiration. Yes. Especially Sunday's Kiss of Life. Yes. I am like in love. I almost didn't even come to this interview. It was so good. I'm an artist. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that would not have been good. I know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm listening to your music. Oh, but you're here. Huh? Yeah. Um, now, yeah, I get a sense it, he's such it, a nice guy. Can't you just tell he's a nice guy? Well, like, thank you very much. No, you know, so. I, I would like to ask, do you have any favorite, is Kiss of Life your favorite since you've had a snapshot or is there some a favorite that you've, um, that you have from the project? You know something? I'm going to get back to you on that because you know something? Yeah. I'm a replayer. So I like to take my time. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. to take my time. And if I blur out one, then I'll be like, oh, I meant this one. Yeah. Because I also, also have been keeping a library. We have a library mm -hmm. of artists like yourself. And mm -hmm. so I'd like to, does that, do I get a special rendition from you? Mm -hmm. It's op open invitation. <gasps> yes. if, it, if it's up to me, Earth, Wind, and Fire is fantasy. You guys can, you can do that one. <laughs> well, I and I think if we... If we have you on next time, we must see the saxophone and hear a few notes. I mean, yes. oh, we, we can. So we're going to take if out and just say when. OK, good. <laughs> OK, 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 Christina, could you send that in? I'm on now? that. Like, I'm going to talk to your people. Yeah. people's going to we're going to talk to yeah. your people. <laughs> we're going to take the if I feel out like a Medea coming on, like I'm like when. We've now? been talking about getting music on here and what how amazing would that be to oh have my. have you play something for us while we're sitting here listening since we can't I'm we sorry. haven't come to one of your concerts yet. If you well, do that, you'll you, know. you will you will never get me off this computer. I'm just telling you that right now. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's, uh, again, you know, it is just uh, an honor and a pleasure uh, to be able to have the opportunity. And there's also, you know, where artists promoters, uh, radio personalities. I mean, we're all, we, we all are, are in this cycle to where, you know, we're supporting each other. Yes. Um, because, you know, we as, as artists, we, we need promoters and venues and radio personalities to help us. And so I, I truly believe that, you know, one hand just helps the other. Yeah. Absolutely. And your, so your music just washes the soul. So see how that goes? Yes. <laughs> Very true. Andre Ward, courtesy of Double Exposure Media. Thank you so, so much for gracing us with your presence. And next time, there will be a saxophone. Yes. And I'll never leave. <laughs> I'll never leave. <laughs> I, I, again, want to just take the quick opportunity to say thank you very much for the uh, very fun conversation. I, I, you know, oh. time flies when you're having fun. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> it just means you have to come back and we are going to look forward to it. I'm thank looking forward to so it as soon. well. An absolute yeah. honor. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you Absolutely. so much. And thank good luck with the new album. Thank you very yes. much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.